Hey everyone, in this video I want to talk about building apps yourself from scratch or perhaps using some kind of app builder. You've probably seen them around and maybe you even feel threatened a little bit as a developer by these app builders, but actually I think they are a compliment to you because they allow me to build certain types of apps much faster than if I would have to build them from scratch, code everything from scratch. And also if I have team members that are not code savvy, they are able to update the app themselves without bothering me as a developer. So as an example, I run an e-learning website. Users can sign up here and they can go through the courses in a dashboard. And let's say I want to see the progress of each student or I want to see how many new students I have this week. Now basically like an admin dashboard. Yes, I could code everything from scratch myself, but actually these days I'm looking at these app builders more and more often because they simplify it, they make it much faster. So I can focus my work more on really sophisticated, highly customized software. So in this video, I want to show you Codely, they are today's sponsor. And actually, I think they have a great platform to build these types of applications much faster than I could build myself from scratch, code everything from scratch myself. And I don't lose uh, some capability or something like that. So as I'll show you, they allow us to basically click and point in a UI to build an app or website. But if I do need to go into the code, that is still possible. So I don't lose capabilities by using a app builder platform like Codely. So I find a tool like Codely very suitable if you need some kind of internal tool. So the type of app that is suitable for an app builder platform like Codely, they are very often going to be some kind of back office app, an internal app in your company. Right? Let's say you have a bunch of employees and your employees need to schedule their vacation time or days off. Right? Maybe you, you want to have some kind of app that manages all of that. Or maybe your company has a bunch of events and the employees, they need to let the company know if they're going to attend the event or not. And you just need some kind of app to easily manage that. Right, so there's a lot of back office work that goes through these apps and an app builder platform, I have to say, makes that much easier. Right? In my case, I would like to have a dashboard, for example, for my student, but that's not all. Maybe you actually do have a good idea for a SaaS, for example, if you're a bit savvy with Codely, it may actually make sense to build even that in Codely. Yes, technically you could build everything from scratch with code, right? We are developers, but it may, be, it may be simply faster to do it this way. And also if you have somebody on your team that is not code savvy, they are able to uh, change some things in the app themselves without uh, bothering you. We can build the app here and then also deploy it here, by the way. But let me actually just quickly show you how it works. All right, so here I'm in the dashboard and you can also take a look at it yourself. You can find a link in the description, but here I can create my first app. And as of recording, they have a free trial, by the way. So you can just check it out. Now I'm going to create my app here and it's really nice to have a bunch of templates out of the box. So if you do have, for example, that event planning type of necessity for your company, you can start from there, even for vacation management, or if you have a bunch of CRUD operations that need to be done, it makes sense to start from a template like this. Now, I just want to show you how the platform actually works. So I will actually uh, start from scratch here. And they even have, by the way, an open AI template here as well to generate a bunch of test data. That's nice. But we will start from a blank slate here. All right, so I've already built a bunch of apps here. So and now it will prompt me to pay. However, if you want to try it out, they have a free initial trials as of recording. So make sure to check that out. So you can uh, check that out. So let's actually say I'm building a guest book just to show you how it works. So people can leave a message behind on the page, let's say. And this is just going to be a blog guest book website. All right, so we can pick how powerful the resources should be here. I, this is just a guest book that I'm building here. So nothing fancy. So I'm not going to pick anything. This should be fine. And by default right now, we are going to build an app in the development environment. So this is just going to be during development. We can then push it to a staging environment if we want, or for Q and A or for production. I'll show you that later. All right. So I will go through here. All right. So then my development environment here is being provisioned for me. So now everything is running and now I want to build my app and we do it in the so-called studio. So we can open the studio here and it will give us basically a complete full stack app builder. So if you've ever used some kind of uh, web design software or something like that, it will look familiar to you. However, this is actually for full stack applications. So it's not just a design or a front end. It's actually a database, backend server. It's all in one. Okay. Um, they actually allow, they will walk you through it, but let me actually do that for you. So this is what you will see initially. And actually on the left hand side, it may actually already look familiar to you if you're a developer, because this is very similar to what you would see in your IDE as well, like a tree of files. However, it's a little bit different. So here we can specify the pages that we want in our app. So we're just going to have a homepage. And here we can specify everything else about our app 
for example, how the database should be structured, who should have access, etc. Right? But before, okay, but before we get there, let's actually start with a page. Let's say a home page, and the home page will need to display some data, right? So when we have a website or app, what are we doing? We're basically displaying data or updating data. That's the whole point of an app. A, a website is typically more just displaying data. An app is often more interactive. So we, you also want to create new data, update it, delete it. In this case, we want to have a guest book. So there will be some kind of greetings uh, data. But let's actually start off with just building a page. Okay, I'm going to create a new page and let's just call this home page. All right, so here we have a probably quite a familiar view if you've ever worked with any kind of design software. I will zoom in a little bit here so you can see what's going on. I will actually collapse this a little bit so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing here. So this is our page right now and it's completely empty. So here on the left hand side, I can add components to the page. All right, so here let's actually start off with just simple text. I just want to have a simple heading on the page, basically just saying something like uh, guest book. On the right hand side, I can style this and I don't have to memorize a bunch of CSS. I can all just click and point here, right? So I can change the size to let's say 38 pixels and let's actually make it a little bit bolder as well. All right, that's fine with me. Let's also change the background color to something not pure white because it's gonna hurt the eyes. Let's make it a little bit more this color. I like this color, nice warm color. Right, super basic. Now I can save here. All right, so super basic of course, but let's actually preview this now. So I can click on preview and it wants me to specify which page it should start with because technically I could have multiple pages. So here I can specify that the home page should be the the place where it all starts. So I will save all and now I will preview. All right, so here is our page. All right, so now of course we wanna, we wanna display all the messages that have been submitted. So now we actually need to work with data. So the purpose of any website or app is ultimately to display data or update data. So in this case, it would be the guestbook entries, right? Or the messages. So if we go here, we can specify the shape of our data here under model. We will specify the data over here and I will call, this will be a so-called data class and we can say this is a message, okay? Now a message, how should, what should the shape of the data be? Well, it should have uh, a name, right? Who is leaving the message? That would be a string and the actual uh, content of the message, right? The actual text, that should be a string as well, okay? Very simple uh, message. This is, if you're coming from SQL, this would be like a SQL table that we're gonna create here. So let me actually save this again. And each message by default also has an ID. Okay, so that's just the default. So this is the shape of our messages. Now, if we wanna inspect anything with our data, there is also a data view here. So here is where we can inspect our data. We can see the, we can see the shape of them. And you can see now we have one message data class here. But if I click on it, you can see the columns here, but you can see there are no rows here yet because we haven't added any data. So let's actually quickly add some sample data here. I can actually just pop up this table on the right here and I can allow editing. All right, so let's actually quickly add some sample data here. I can do that on the right side here. I can click on the plus button here on the bottom and it will allow me to input some new data. We don't have to specify the ID, but let's say John left a nice message here. Awesome website. Okay, I will save it and it has automatic and it will automatically create an ID for me. You can see now we have one piece of data in our database here. Let's quickly add another one. Let's also say Jane, super website. Okay, I will also save this one. All right, so now we have some data, right? So now the challenge is how can we display the data on our website? I will close out of the data view here for now. Now we can go back to our homepage. Here you have a bunch of tabs here, basically that's how it works. So we wanna display data. So we're gonna use a component for that. If you have a list of something or a table of something, there is the data table. We can use, well, different options here, but let's actually use a data table here. Now it needs to know what data to display here, right? We could have many different source pieces of data. It needs to know what you wanna display here. So here we have Codely sources. So if we open this up, I can pick from my catalog of all the data I have. Well, I, we have this message, right? So I actually want to make the message here, the data source. So I want to make this message here. I can click this. I want to add this as a source, a Codely source for this page. So I can just confirm here. And now on this page, I sort of have access to this messages source. I can actually click and drag this onto this component here. So now it knows what data to display. Now it, we have name, uh, the content of the message, and maybe many other things as well. So we can also specify what exactly in that source of data should be displayed. That's under attributes here. So we don't want to display the ID, for example, only the name 
I will drag that here as well. And also the content, right? So I can drag that here. And now you can see we get a list of all the names and the content. Of course, these are just placeholders, but that's basically how I can connect a UI visual component with the actual data in the database. So if I actually uh, save everything here, and now if I refresh my website, let's take a look, it's gonna load. And here you can see we have our data now on the page. We can style this a bit differently if we want, right? So here, I can also uh, change the text here, by the way, right? Maybe it should be author and maybe it should be a uh, message, right? But let's actually give it the exact same names as the columns in our database, just to practice a bit. So here I have a text input component that I can actually just drag here somewhere on the page. Let's actually do it on the, let's actually, yeah. So now we have, let's actually do it here. Yeah, so now we have this input and an the user needs to know what, what do I need to put here? That's why we have a label. So their name should be input right there. And I wanna have another one that should be the actual message. So we need a button for that. Let's also add that here. And the button should say something like uh, submit message. Okay, so now what we will have is this. Okay, again, we can style it much prettier, but, uh, but I just quickly wanna show you how it works. And we could continue building out the page like this. We don't have to build everything from scratch ourselves because they also have templates here. So for example, if you are building something that has to do with appointment, I can already drag this as a component in here. So let me actually show you that here as well. So now you can see I also have a bunch of new components here that I don't have to build from scratch myself. And by the way, um, if you do wanna hook into events, so if we actually wanna submit the data, we can do that here from the events panel. So there are these events happening on the page, like a click event, double click even. We can hook into that here with, uh, with actions, right? So then we could, for example, invoke a function or even multiple actions or navigate, right? So maybe the goal of a button click is actually to navigate to a different page. We can specify all of that in here, right? So we can make everything much more sophisticated. This was just a quick example, but that is in a nutshell how this works. Now let's actually take a look at those more sophisticated templates that they offer you for an app as well. So right now we have a simple app. Now, if I go here and you can see it's in the development mode, right? So that's what we want. So we can freely develop with, without uh, running the risk of doing something that doesn't work. So, but now let's say I'm satisfied with my app. I actually want to deploy it. So I can say uh, here under deploy, I can go for a new release. They automatically tag it with the date. We can say first, uh, first release, and we can set up a QA environment, let's say, so that we first can test even more and then actually push it to production. So here we have our releases and I'm just going to deploy this. So it's gonna ask me, yes, I'm sure. And then here I can uh, see all the URLs. So I can see this to get access to the studio, but I can also have a public URL here. Right, I do have to activate public access, so there's additional safety here. And now I can open this up in a new tab. And here I go with my beautiful guestbook website and this random other component, but you get the point. We can make it very sophisticated here and wire everything up just like we want. And you can go from development all the way to production within the Codely cloud. And by the way, I can add other users here as well. So this is really beneficial if you have other people on your team that are not really code savvy, maybe actually a product manager or somebody who knows what it should be, what the features that it should have, but they don't want to touch the code. You can basically give them a UI to with Codely here, you can create a new user that should have access and allow them to change things as well. Now you may say, oh, I don't wanna build out my entire app from scratch myself. You don't have to, because probably you can already pick from one of these templates. So let me just quickly show you as well how, sophistic how sophisticated we can get here with one of these apps. I will just go with the CRUD operations app. I will select that one. Okay, so now I have my CRUD app and it's gonna provision the resources first. All right, so now I have another app here. It's ready to go. Now I can open up the studio again. All right, so here we have the starting view again, but let's actually see the actual app itself. So what is the app that is being built in the studio? All right, so here we have the, the homepage and since it's a template, they just have some intro data. So if we wanna change that, for example, we can go to all the pages here, right? So they have created, let me zoom in a little bit, six different pages and the homepage is what we are looking at right now. So if I zoom out a little bit, you can see they have some data here. If I just add exclamation mark and I would save that and now I would refresh, that is what we are gonna see here, right? So you can see it's actually very dynamic because it's saying application name, that's actually a variable. And it's using application author and a link. You can see those are already, those are being rendered here by Codely. So we can get very dynamic. Now we can generate some sample data to make this app work. So I actually added 
a button here and what it will do is it will insert data into our database so let's actually inspect the data here okay so you can see it has added a bunch of dummy data here we can see that there are two data classes here users with our addresses and if you inspect the data here by the way you can also see how the relationship between them is structured here so you can see users they have an address and you can also see that here in the details view right so all the data here is what we have now now we can go to the actual demo so that's a different page, the main page. All right, so here we got a table with a bunch of dummy data for users and we can sort them here. We can sort them. I can also add uh, new ones here so I can add new users and now it would be somewhere. I have very simple CRUD based application. I can uh, delete users, right? If I select one, I can delete them. And I can refresh with new data. I think you get the point here, which is that we can get very sophisticated. Now, how is all of that wired up? Well. I do recommend if you're going to try out the free trial that you pick one of the templates so you can learn about how it works. Let me actually close this. But the view that we were just looking at, the data table view, you can see it's all just a, it's all just a component and then we have connected that to some data source and it's, it's just going to output the columns of that data right here. We can see the actual model structure here as well. So it's like a node canvas here and uh, you can see the functions that we can that were created on that we can also see all the methods here methods are more like a, a utility function type of function that we can add here um, here we have the classes all of the code based features that you're already familiar with are in here as well the shared assets so if you have images or logos for example very similar to a public folder in a node.js project you would put that in here users can have roles and privileges so you can specify access control features in here and yeah overall i have to say uh it's very intuitive if you just take a look at one of the templates that they have but i think you get the point which is that you can build apps very fast without coding from scratch you can just click and point in a nice ui and build apps much faster than probably what you could do from scratch yourself i would say it's mostly useful for your internal business type of apps and also if you work with other people that are not code savvy but they still need to have control over the project so that's what i would use it for so i would say check them out you can find a link in the description in any case i want to thank codely for sponsoring the video and i want to thank you for watching and i hope to see you the next one bye